Welcome to this tutorial presented by oraclecoach.com. This is Claire Rajan and in this video segment I'll explain how data manipulation language statements are written in a PLSQL block. The most common data manipulation language statements are insert, update and delete. I'll also show you how to write transaction control language statements, commit and rollback. I have SQL Star Plus open and I'm connected as the user HR. To make this tutorial simple, I'll create a table called T1 consisting of three columns. So here's the create table command, create table T1, open parentheses C1 number, C2 varchar 2 of 10, C3 date. I'm now going to write a PLSQL block that is going to add a number of rows into the table. I'm going to edit a file, I have EDA, it tells me that the file uh, is not found, do I want to create it? I'm going to say yes. Now in order for the font to be a little bit larger, I'm going to increase it to size 16. Uh, this is not something you need to do, but um, I've come across a number of uh, comments telling me that the font size is a little bit small on my video, so um, I've increased it to size 16. Now inside the editor, uh, in a file called A, I'm going to write a PLSQL block which has a declaration section which would mean I'm declaring some variables. So here's the PLSQL block that has a declaration section declaring two variables A and D. A is, an, is a numeric variable that has an initial value of 2. D is a date variable that holds an initial value of sysdate. In the body of the PLSQL block there are three insert statements. The first two insert statements pass values for all the columns explicitly. Now the first insert statement is insert into T1 values 1, comma, ZZ, comma, 29th of April 1968. The second insert statement is insert into T1 values open parentheses. Over here I've mentioned A. Now A is the memory variable that was declared holding the value 2. When I reference a memory variable inside an insert statement in a PLSQL block, the value contained in the variable will be put into the table followed by the value YY, followed by 20th of November 1997. The third insert statement uh, passes values only for two columns, the columns being C1 and C3, and the values being passed for these columns are D, and again I'm referencing a memory variable, which is the variable called, uh, the variable called D that holds the current date. So after this particular block is executed, there should be three rows in the table. I've got a PLSQL procedure successfully completed. Let's have a look at the data in the table. So here are my three rows. The first row 1, ZZ, 29th of April 1968. The second row where I had referenced the memory variable to take and the, the value contained in the memory variable is what was stored in the table to YY 20th of November 1997. 
the third row where I had passed values only for two of the columns. So notice that the, uh, one of the columns is automatically taking a null value. This was the column that I had chosen to omit in the insert statement. So here uh, the values are 3, null and then the value that was contained in the memory variable called D. The value that was contained was today's date which shows up as the 7th of March 2011. So I just showed you uh, how to write a PL SQL block in which a number of insert statements were written. I'm going to edit the program uh, or the file that was created earlier called A and I'm going to make some changes to it so that I can show you uh, how an update statement uh, is written inside a PL SQL block. Here in this PL SQL block, I'm declaring a variable called nd, which is of date type, uh, set to an initial value of the 2nd of Feb 1972. I have two update statements in the body of the program. Both the update statements are going to affect the row where the C1 column is taking the value 3. The first update statement changes uh, the column C2 to take a new value of AA. Now, um, earlier this particular, co uh, this particular column is a uh, taking a null value. Uh, that's because I had chosen to omit the value when I was uh, inserting the row into the table. So the null value should disappear and instead you should see the value AA. The second update statement is uh, setting the, the column um, C3 which was set to today's date to take the value that's contained in the memory variable called ND. So instead of today's date you should see 2nd of Feb 1997. Once again for the column which is uh, where the C1 uh, where the C1 column is taking the value 3. It tells me once again that this uh, procedure successfully completed. Let me uh, re-query the table Look at the data in the table. Uh, here, uh, all the changes that I had done through the updates were only affecting the third row. So earlier the row was an, uh, the row took a null value for C2. Now it's taking the value AA because of the first update. Earlier, uh, the column C3 for the row where C1 equals null was taking the system date, which is today's date. And because of the update, uh, it now takes the value which was contained in the memory variable, which is uh, 2nd of Feb 1972. So I just showed you how to write update statements inside a PL SQL block. I'm going to edit my file called A once again so that I can show you how to write delete statements inside a block. So here is a declaration section declaring a variable called rm that is of number type taking an initial value of 3. The body of the program has two delete statements. The first delete statement is affecting the row where uh, c1 is taking the value 2. This was the second row in the table. So uh, with this delete statement, the second row in the table should disappear. Then you have a delete statement where uh, I'm referencing c1 equal to rm. Rm is taking the value 3, so it's deleting the row where C1 is equal to 3. So the third row in the table should uh, be deleted as far uh, as with this delete statement. So it tells me PL SQL procedure uh, successfully completed. After the two deletes, I should have only one row in the table which is the first row. So here we have our uh, row where we have C1 taking the value 1. Uh, I've made a number of uh, changes to the table uh, T1 with all of the PL SQL blocks that I have executed. Uh, all the statements or the DML statements that were executed through the different blocks were all part of the same transaction. 
now when you want to uh, indicate that you uh, want to make the changes by made by a transaction a uh, permanent the statement to use would be a commit statement and the statement to indicate that you want to undo the changes is a rollback statement now I'm going to edit um, A once again and I'm going to put in a commit this is then going to be followed by an insert statement where I'll insert into T1 values 55 DD and let's say today's date this is then going to be followed by a rollback followed by an end forward slash now this commit statement which is the first statement in the body is going to commit the ongoing transaction now the ongoing transaction is the one that I have been working with performing all those inserts updates and deletes now after all of the ch the, those changes were completed the only row that is really in the table is the row where C1 was taking the value 1 and that is the one that is going to be made permanent in the database now this is followed by uh, another insert statement now as soon as the commit is completed Oracle is going to start another transaction now the new transaction that begins will consist of this insert statement uh, where a row is being inserted however the change will not be made permanent uh, the change or rather the change is actually happening in memory and uh, it's only when you tell Oracle that you want to make a change permanent that the change is written to disk now uh, this transaction consists of only one statement and uh, what I have done is followed it with a rollback which would mean that the ongoing transaction will be rolled back the ongoing transaction being this insert statement which is inside this block so what would happen is after this block completes the only thing that you should see in the table is the first row because that is the row that was committed even though this row was inserted it was undone because of the rollback So here is the row where the column C1 was taking the value 1. In this tutorial, I demonstrated how DML and uh, transaction control language statements or TCL statements can be written in a PLSQL block. I hope you find this tutorial useful. For other videos, tutorials and articles, you can take a look at the oraclecoach.com website. Thank you for your time and thank you for listening.